Okay, so we've got a navbar, and um, I'm just going to change that link to uh, page, page one. So we've got a navbar in place. Um, we're going to update that. So the next thing we're thinking about is what goes into this space here. So uh, Bootstrap comes with some different components that you can place in that area there. So we could use a carousel, for example. Um, there's something called a jumbotron, or we could just start building some media objects or um, elements inside of there. But what we're going to do first is I'm just going to show you how to use a jumbotron. So this is like a um, an area that <coughs> like an advertising area, a standout area uh, to highlight a element maybe that's in your website for people to click on and go into that area. Um, so this is really easy to develop. You can see that this is an example. This is the code here. So we're just going to take this example and we're just going to put it onto our web page. So I'm in components and Jumbotron and I'm going to go to copy and I'm going to put it just under my navbar. Now for, there's a lot of code that's going to be developed here. And what can be useful is if you separate your code maybe uh, with some comments. So here I'm going to say um, navbar. Um, and I'm just going to break that down into an X like there. Now, I c obviously, I can extend these as much as I want to make it kind of stand out. And then I might want to standardize my code so that I'm going to have two gaps and then the code. And then what I might do is just two gaps and then the code. Sorry, two gaps. So here I'm just going to put end, maybe navbar end. Um, so here I can clearly see my navbar starts and it ends there. And then I go onto my jumbotron. And that can make it easier for you to kind of follow your code once the page gets rather large. Uh, this type of format, now you could change this format to whatever you wanted. You could just have one line, for example. Um, you could have multiple lines if you wanted to. Um, <coughs> as long as in at least in here, indicates that it's um, a non-element. A non so it won't be shown on the page. Uh, so it's in green. If it does go a different color, then you know that it's not working. So for example, if you take that away, it goes black. And you can see that those comments, uh, that's now going to be shown on the page and ruin the, the design of your page. So make sure it's green. So those are comments. Uh, so this is the, going back to a Drumbotron. So we've got our Drumbotron here. Um, so I'll just end that. Um, so to work with our Jumbotron, let's first have a look, see what it looks like. You can see that it's the full width of the page. Um, it just says, hello, well, blah, 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 blah. And there's a nice little button there and that takes you to another page. So what can we do here? So first of all, let's just read this. So we've got div to div. The class is Jumbotron. So that's a piece of CSS that's linked to um, Bootstrap. A class element that's um, linked to Bootstrap. So we've got the H1, so that rep represents um, Hello World. Now it says Display 4, so let's change that to Display 1, see what happens. Notice that it's bigger. So in Bootstrap, you can also change the size of things. So if I type in here, uh, Display, <coughs> there we go. So Display 1, Display 2, Display 3, Display 4. So this is how um, to change, or one of the ways you can change the size of your text for headings by utilizing um, the class display one, two, three, or four. Notice how I use that in the search bar to find more information about it. You can do that pretty much everything here. Um, so that's one thing that you can change. I'm gonna put uh, welcome to my website. There we go. Uh, and then notice here we've got lead. So again, that's another stylistic um, element we can use. Uh, make a paragraph stand out, out by using lead. So you can see here that the text is slightly bigger. Um, there's other elements here. We can use mark or small. Um, if you if you read down, there's there's more things that you can do. Um, 
for example, text center, that could be useful. So let's just take that and put it um, in our class. See what happens there. Notice now that the text is centered. So we could do the same thing on the display. So inside, this is inside the class equals between the, the double quotes. Put that in the middle. And then we'll, we'll do that here. So we've got this line break, this HR class my four. That's the line break you see here. And then we've got paragraph here. So um, we'll just add a class to that paragraph. And then we'll put in text center. And then we need to kind of center this button. Okay. So that button isn't going to be centered by doing that, is it? Let's be honest, because it's a lot of text. Um, so we'll do that in a minute. But you can see that what we've done here is we've moved everything into the center. It looks nicer in the center. And um, I'll show you potentially how to change some of these display headings um, by utilizing display. But we can overwrite some of these styles. We'll do that in a later um, <coughs> later video. But here you can see that yeah, we've got a nice jumbotron here and um, <coughs> it's like a, a splash area to kind of click in to another section of our website. Okay, so um, the last thing I guess is to, to put this button in the middle. Now, in order to do that, you can simply just use text center there. So I put text center here <coughs> in the in the div, and I've refreshed, and you can see now the button's in the middle too. So everything is nicely centered now. <coughs> so um, going back to this button, it's this button primary. So let's have a look at this button primary, see what it tells us about that. Um, so what we can do, uh, what we have available is uh, the ability to change different buttons. So I've now gone to buttons. <coughs> you can see that there's all different types of buttons. We've got buttons with outlines, um, sizes of buttons. We can use these um, classes to change the type of button. We've got uh, different shapes and sizes, active states, disabled states. Um, so there's a lot of different button methods um, we can utilize. Uh, to change the color so here this is secondary so if i change go back to my code here it says button primary notice that button primary is blue which represents this blue here so if i wanted to change it to secondary or i just remove button primary change it to button secondary and then refresh and there we go we change the color so all the information is here it can be difficult to find sometimes um, but a little dig in, you'll find new classes, new information, how to make some additional changes to your code.